that uh, we would be duped. Because the Russians, are they play a very long game, and they're very, very good, and they will invest individuals for decades. So that, that was the end of the game. Now, let's look at the Trump circumstance. There wasn't one instance a decade ago as a single one-off event. There are hundreds of them. You alluded to the financial circumstance. It's, no oligarch can, can get his money out of Russia in substantial sums without the okay of the Kremlin. It cannot happen. They will be um, destroyed, killed, uh, uh, imprisoned, the money seized, and so on. So the day before, I think literally... The Trump Tower in Toronto was going to um, default on a $391 million loan. Out of uh, nowhere appears a Russian immigrant to Canada who said, what a brilliant investment opportunity this is, Donald. I would be happy to guarantee this loan. Poof, that's, that's $400 million right there. That happens over and over. You look at the Trump investment in Kazakhstan. You can go online and find videos of him there and the uh, Cohen supposed investor's son performed at the uh, Miss Universe pageant in Moscow in 2013. Right. They're all parts of the Russian mafioso. mafioso. Um, the, the investment never occurred. They're known uh, money laundering uh, uh, criminals, and they are the associates of Trump. They would not be acting without the okay of the Russian authorities. It just goes on and on. So mm -hmm. all of that is disqualifying from a national security perspective. It is shocking. Well, just in the last few minutes, um, I remember speaking with Bill Colby years ago about uh, why he fired James Jesus Angleton, the head of counterintelligence and the head of the, the Soviet East Bloc desk at the CIA, who was, and, he, and his dotage was getting paranoid. But nevertheless, wasn't there a program or 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 a file at the CIA back starting with Angleton on the equivalent of a kind of Manchurian candidate. This is even before the Manchurian candidate movie was made, or written, or the book was written. Yes. I think what was it called, the Monster File or something? It was called the Monster Plot. That is literally true. the Monster Plot. It dates to the 1960s, and it sounds like something out of Hollywood because it actually, in the end, was a movie. Now two movies produced in Hollywood, and it sounds like a Hollywood. The scenario, but it's but in fact it is real. The uh, national U.S. national security establishment became gravely concerned that the KGB, the Russian intelligence service, was trying to develop um, a uh, an American political candidate, not a specific individual, but a program to identify and or create one whom they could manipulate and control in any number of ways to place at the highest levels of the American government. Uh, there is a lot of investigation put into this, and the conclusion was that they, they, the Russians had tried but had failed. But that was 50 years ago, and times have changed. And I will point out that um, Harry Hopkins, a name most people won't know anymore, was the primary advisor to Franklin Roosevelt, President Roosevelt. The KGB considered him uh, a KGB asset. Now, it's most likely that he was an American patriot who was being, who without question, was serving as a channel from the KGB, but was also clearly being manipulated by the KGB. The uh, primary financial, no, no, foreign policy advisor to President Wilson was a man named Sir William Wiseman, who wasn't the U.S. Secretary of State or the head of American military intelligence. He was the head of British intelligence in the United States during World War I. And it was only he to whom... President Wilson listened. So this happens, and the Russians, uh, quote, monster plot is not a science fiction uh, tale or an espionage tale. It's a true story, and uh, the Russians are persistent, highly professional, very, very subtle, and uh, the contacts are numerous that have been established and documented of uh, known associates of Russian intelligence with members of Trump's entourage and Trump. Well, uh, this is a fascinating conversation, Glenn, and um, I just wish, as I say, Nancy Pelosi could weaponize her words when she says that Trump is a continuing threat to national security. She knows something that she's not telling us. Um, and uh, Well, you know, Hillary said it too, and in one yeah. of the shocks of my life, I guess I am naive about our fellow Americans, um, Hillary was quite clear uh, that she called Trump accurately Putin's puppet and said all 17 agencies of the American intelligence establishment had concluded 
that mm-hmm. this was going on, and it was just dismissed, just dismissed. Uh, one last thing I'll add. I, I'm, you've, you've pressed, obviously, buttons with me because this is so significant and important and grave. Um, every uh, serving or ex-FBI and CIA officer or Amer- American military intelligence officer with whom I have had contact for the last three years has concurred with my assessment. I have not found one who thinks that uh, what I have said is uh, out of line. Well, Glenn Carl, I thank you very much for joining us here today. Anytime. And again, I've been speaking with Glenn Carl, who's the author of The Interrogator and Education. He was a member of the CIA's clandestine service for 23 years and retired in 2007, a Deputy National Intelligence Officer for Transnational Threats. He's quoted in an article in Business Insider, National Security Experts warned Trump is behaving like a controlled spy. This has been Background Briefing. I'm Ian Masters. I'd like to thank producer Graham Fitzgibbon and engineer D'Angelo Jones. This program is available at backgroundbriefing.org where you can bookmark it, sign up for email updates, as well as subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy this program, make sure you rate and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and SoundCloud. And be sure to share the program with friends, family, and colleagues on Twitter and Facebook at Ian Masters Media. And if you are in a position to support us so that we can sustain and build this program, visit us at backgroundbriefing.org slash donate. Your support will help spread the word and keep us corporate free, fearless and independent. And we'll be back again tomorrow with another background briefing. Bye for now.